name is David Vincent. Hey! Yes. And, uh... Where's your big brother? Ragna! <laughs> um, I, I don't know... What's that? You should do that when Patrick walks in. Yes. I yeah, know exactly. Brother! <laughs> I will. I will. If he comes, I don't know where he's at. I haven't seen him yet. Nobody. Um, nor did he make the autograph session. I did. I, I, and then Lauren Land, I did finally get a hold of. She's on her way. She's late. Um, but at any rate, so you guys are stuck with me. Uh, so for those of you, I, I, I assume everybody's here for the Blaze Blue panel. So you all know Blaze Blue. Well, and Dead or Alive 5. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to uh, just list off a few of my other credits. Um, just you may be aware of, or may not be aware of, some of the other stuff that I've been in uh, that perhaps you've been playing or, uh, or watching. So, um, is, uh, we're all anime fans here, right? Yeah. Everybody been watching anime. So, you, uh, anybody watching Blue Exorcist? Yeah. Awesome. I was Arthur Goose Angel in Blue Exorcist. Uh, Code Geass. Anybody watch Code yeah. Geass? It's a great show. I uh, was um, Lee Shinke oh, in, uh, in Code Geass. Uh, -da 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 -da. <laughs> you watch that? I, was, I played the 15 year old in love with a disembodied head. <laughs> Seiji Yagani. Um, and then uh, one of my favorites now is uh, well, Fate Stay Night, I was Assassin. And then um, Fate Zero, anybody watch that? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. I do Gilgamesh. Archer and that. Mongrels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and oh, I can't forget Grim Jow. Of course, Grim Jow, Jagger Jack from the series Bleach. I see him Ichigo. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, anybody see Gunsword? Yes, boss. Yay! One of my favorite animes that I ever got to work on. I, I did the lead character in that one, uh, Vaughn. Vaughn of the Dawn. <laughs> and, um, uh, Persona 4, the animation, I did, uh, Nagase, Dice Game. Yay. Girls are stupid. That's the character talking about. <laughs> uh, and then, um, well, a series that I'm working on right now, as a matter of fact, I'm recording this on Monday morning, uh, is Kill a Kill. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! So, I'm really, really excited about this, uh, this show. It's so good! Um, I play the character Sen Cats. Uh, who is the talking sailor uniform that uh, Ryu Gomato wears. Um, video games, I'm sure that you all might be aware that I do the voice of Jin Kisaragi. Blaze Blue, or Blaze Blue, depending on how you want to say it. I like Blaze Blue. Um, other video games that I've done, uh, Castlevania, I did Richter Belmont in a number of different variations of Castlevania. Uh, Dead or Alive 5, I uh, played Elliot. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, I was Kais. Um, this one I'm excited about, Fire Emblem Awakening. I did the voice of Robin, which I just reprised my role in Smash Brothers, which is coming out on uh, the Nintendo Wii, November 21st. Um, I have to mention Neptunia, did everybody play that? Oh, it's so good to see you! I play a very, <laughs> very flamboyant character, um, a non death uh, in that, uh, let's see. Of course, uh, I mean, martial law. Oh yes, and of course, Tekken, uh, and the voice of martial law. What a Um, T-Hawk and Street Fighter, uh, Resident Evil Revelations, I was Raymond Vesser, and, uh, Tales, any, uh, Tales? Woo! Tales of Graces. Yay! I did the voice for, uh, Richard in Tales of Graces. And a whole lot of other stuff. So, um, at any rate, so what we're going to do is, since uh, you guys are, are, are um, stuck with just David Vincent, um, I'm going to go ahead and obviously open it up. We can talk about anything, okay? We can talk about Blaze Blue, or Blaze Blue, uh, or we can talk about anything else you guys want to know. You want to know where I get my haircut? Yeah. Ask away. Go ahead. Get a question right away. Um, what's it like being Shin Kamiya in Tekken Blood Rain? Shin Kamiya uh, is the character that I did. This I did the movie version for uh, Tekken Blood Vengeance. And um, Shin Kamiya is actually an original character. He's not in the video game series. 
and as an original character going in and playing, bringing this whole new character to that movie, it was really cool. Uh, he's, I don't know, did anybody uh, see Tekken Blood Vengeance? A couple of you did. So he's the guy with the, the arm thing. So it was, a lot, it was a lot of fun, you know, he was a cool character. Um, I won't give away his time, we'll just give away a big spoiler. <laughs> I won't do that. But uh, no, he was, he was very cool. It was a very technical type of voice acting with that particular character because there was a, uh, there was a, there was a big fight scene. It, and you'll remember which one I'm talking about. And that fight scene, I had to match that fight scene live. They couldn't just do one at a time. I had to go boom, 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 boom. And so that was, uh, it was very technically challenging uh, to actually record that character. But it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And the, uh, the, the animation on that was, was spectacular. Yeah, very cool. Yes. Uh, what was it like being Grim What was it like being Grim um, deliciously evil. <laughs> Grimjow Jagger Jack is one of the villains, um, and my favorite villain that I've ever gotten to play, uh, on the, the hit TV, uh, TV series Bleach. Um, anybody, I'm sure some of you have seen Bleach, right? Okay. So, Bleach is pretty popular. Um, Grimjow, you know, I'll tell you a, a funny story about Grimjow. I actually auditioned, um, all right, I played him in the, the video game version, Shattered Blade, probably about three years before he came out in the anime. So, Wendy Lee, you guys know who Wendy is? Yeah. <laughs> so, Wendy was directing. And I go in to record, and she's like, we're gonna have you come in, Dave, and I want you to play this character, he's really cool. I said, okay. So I go in, and uh, she shows me this scene, and this is not giving away any spoilers, but there's an epic fight scene in the very beginning mm -hmm. of Grim Jeff's arc. Uh, where he's basically handing Ichigo's butt to him, okay? And I look at this epic battle, and I'm like, oh my god, I've got to play this character in the anime! And so, the, uh, I, I call up Studiopolis, which is the company that did it, and I'm like, hey guys, it's uh, David Vincent. Yeah, Dave, how can we help you? I'm like, you know that character, Grimjow? Yeah. I'd really like to reprise my role in the anime. They're like, yeah, David, just come out for two years. Oh, no, Lauren Landa, ladies and gentlemen. Lauren tonight, and the mic is not even on. Of course, it's <laughs> there. We go. Hi, can you hear me now? Yeah. I'm a demon right now. I so, love it. I right? love it. Yes. Awesome. I literally just got it done, and I have to get on the stupid people mover thing. <laughs> Does anybody agree that it's stupid? Yeah. It's stupid. Nice, Dandy. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry, continue, Grimjow. Oh, 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 oh yeah, where was I? I was talking, oh, so anyway, so like, two years goes by and I keep on hounding them. They're like, I'm like, hey guys, it's Dave Vincent. They're like, yeah, Dave, we know. Okay? And so finally, um, like two years passes, and, uh, and I get a, uh, an email, and they're like, hey Dave, uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on, why don't you come in and audition for it? So I'm like, yeah. So I go in, and of course, uh, there is my beloved script for uh, Grimjow and about 30 other guys auditioning for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, no! But I wound up getting the part. That's right. So, Woo! yeah, yeah. It, it was great. Uh, honestly, I, he's such it's a It's because he's David Vincent. It's, because, yeah. it's not just because I'm David Vincent, it's because I'm David Vincent. Yeah. Right. It's not just because you're David Vincent, it's because you're David Vincent and Mr. Clean. And Mr. Clean. <laughs> With chops. With the chops now. With the chops, which is very sexy. Ladies, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Come on. Oh, and happy Halloween, by the way. That's right. Yes! Yeah. Happy Halloween, everybody. I yeah. never I never get to do this at conventions, but because it's Halloween, I had to do something. Are there any Titan fans in here? Attack on Titan yeah. fans? I highly, highly suggest you come to the Titan panel tomorrow, because... I may look a little different, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, either way. <laughs> she really looks like this all the time. Absolutely, I look like this all the time. No, this is what I look like when I wake up. So, don't wake me up in a bad mood, because this is what I'll look like. <laughs> you know, blood dripping down and everything. I just tasted the lovely blood of a virgin, apparently. <laughs> So, what time is it? It's seven, so there should be no little kids in here, so. You actually have a question, which is what we're supposed to be doing. Yes! <laughs> is, sorry, is your makeup, sorry, your makeup, is it because I showed you that picture that one of Matt earlier where it called her devil? No, but it was cool. That picture was awesome. No, uh, I have been planning on doing something uh, 
I was planned for about two weeks or about like a month. I knew I was going to do something for Saturday, but I hadn't decided what I wanted to do for Halloween. And since I had no time to actually go out and buy a costume, uh, makeup was was good enough for me. So, what are you for Halloween? David Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> Voice actor. Am I pulling it off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I am, yeah, I am uh, probably uh, the top David Vincent cosplayer that I know. It's, it's, it's true. In America, yes. it's, it's true. I can't imagine anybody <laughs> cosplaying as David Vincent. <laughs> so, what, what is that that you're... Is that a little ram? I don't know what that is. <sighs> See, I tend to kind of forget things that I audition for and don't get in. <laughs> So, no, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. I'm teasing, no. It's true. No, it's true. It's true. No, it's a huge game, so uh, now, like, I haven't, they haven't found the right character for me yet. But that's okay, because <laughs> I got to do Attack on Titan and Blaze Blue. So, beat that. <laughs> yeah. And Skullgirls. It feels good to be out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Tales of Exilia. And Madoka Magic. I love that you're dandy and you're holding up a Kyoko poster. That makes my day so much. That totally made my day. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yay! Oh my god. You guys are all holding up your phone. You have a figure too? That's so. Does she have a little platform? Yeah, she does. Okay, I'll probably be signing that later. Have you. Uh, did you already have a signing? Or. Uh uh. No, I was signing. Nine? Half an hour after the, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock to 10.30. 9 to 10.30. Yes. Bring your stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, nice try, but no. Yeah. I know, it sucks. I would much, I would like to do, she said we should just turn this panel into an autograph signing. We can't do oh, that. Oh yeah, we get smacked upside the head. Yeah, <laughs> as much as I, as much as I would love to. I would love to taste all of your blood. So evil. <laughs> comes with the makeup, what can I say? No, I was really excited about it. So either way, um, hi mom, hi. That's not my mom, that's her nickname, sorry. She's a total Blaze Blue fan, right? Who's your favorite character? Jinky Sarabi. <laughs> oh, I got an interesting fact. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Ooh. Bite your tongue, mom. <laughs> Yes. Pro players who rate the top characters in the game, like she's number two. What do you do? That's what? awesome. I thought she would. She was a little bit by Kofanoe, the um, oh. but she would, but like she was number one at at Evo. Yeah, yeah she won at Evo. Okay. Like she, like she won at Evo. I have a question for you guys. For those of you who are holding up your cameras, wouldn't you rather like live in the moment? Because you're never going to freaking watch this again after you record it. Someone else will. That's, that's, that's See, right? Like, you record it. Can, can, would you guys mind putting this away? Sorry. It's just, I would much rather share our moments with you. Don't drag Tony Oliver in here. Huh? He's busy. He's busy with his, uh, with the Power Rangers. We need Bang Shishigami. Bang Shishigami! <laughs> he does. He has a crazy game. No, um, Ian Sinclair, who's another guest here, he pointed something out. Um, we were at a convention a couple months ago. He pointed something out that I've never forgotten. As soon as people put their cameras away, we feel, well, some people feel a lot more comfortable. We feel like we can be ourselves with you guys. Whereas if you're up there just holding your cameras, we can't say what we really want to say, you know? And a lot of it is actually fun stuff. And some of it we can't say, but sometimes we do. And, and when you guys are holding up your cameras, you miss out. So hopefully I'm not bursting your eardrums, but I can't, I can't, you know, take care of the volume. Well, it's legal stuff too. Yeah, it's, well, it's not, it's legal stuff, but it's more <laughs> of the fact that, you know, you guys should be living in the moment because this generation is focusing a lot on living through their phones and their cameras and stuff, and it's, it's a shame. Like, Preach. enjoy it. So. Preach! <laughs> so. You had a question. How was it, um, how did you feel getting approached by Capcom to voice Raymond? Raymond Vester? Yeah. I loved it. You know what was, uh, what was great about that period of time? This is for Resident Evil, uh, by the way. What was uh, fantastic about that was is I had just 
booked a movie, the, the movie uh, Raymond, uh, or not Raymond, but uh, Resident Evil um, Damnation. And I booked the movie to go and do motion capture, which is what you wear the, the, the dark suit with little ping pong balls on it. Off. Yeah, and so I got to go and spend a month in Tokyo. Uh, in working. Tokyo. Oh, Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was bad. Um, but I got to spend a month in Tokyo working on Resident Evil Damnation, and I had auditioned for Re Revelations prior uh, to booking Damnation and leaving for Tokyo. And while I was in Tokyo, I found out that I uh, had booked the voice for Raymond Vester. And so, literally, I, I got off the plane. They wanted me there, but I was in Tokyo for a month. So I had um, was working with Capcom in Tokyo, and so they were trying to work with me, and they postponed and postponed and postponed my, my recording session. I literally got picked up from LAX, from a flight from Tokyo, and went straight to the sound uh, uh, stage and uh, recorded Raymond Vester. And Dave, just to remind everybody, how long is the flight from Tokyo to LA? 11 hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, but it was, it was great. Um, you know, I've worked with Capcom on a number of different projects, and uh, they're a great company to work with. Had a fantastic time. And Resident Evil, Resident Evil was actually one of the first video games that I ever played. Uh, that along with, uh, with, well, I should say as a young adult, uh, that and Tekken. I mean, of course, I played Atari when I was a kid, but you, none of you guys were born yet. I don't remember the first game that I, I... I think the first game I ever, 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 ever played was Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. That was, yeah, the Super Nintendo. So, yeah. yeah. It was high school for me. Yeah, well... Yeah, I, I think that was... I played Super Mario Brothers, and then shortly after that, it was... Because when I was a, a kid, I wasn't too much into video... Like, little itty-bitty kid I'm talking about. You know, I was more into playing outside and stuff, but people are like, outside? What is that? <laughs> um, what is this outside business that you're referring to? Um, but I... Uh, uh, I think I played I played Donkey Kong. Um, Asteroids. At, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, you know what I'm talking. About. <laughs> yeah. uh, this guy's like reacting to everything. He knows everything we're gonna say. <laughs> yes, yes, reach it. So, but um, yeah, video games, fun, fun video games. Hi, how about that Blaze Blue game? Anybody yeah. like that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm done. All right. Next question. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say y'all. Uh, Hot. 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 Ridiculously hot. Yeah. No. no. Well, actually, we want your weather. Your weather. We were walking today. I was, uh, I was staying at the, the Crown. So I was walking the Crown over to um, uh, Renz. And, and uh, it was raining and cold outside. And it was <sighs> glorious. Yes. Glorious. Yes. Well, right, no, right now it's Green. cold. That is cold. Yeah, it did cool off. It's, it's yeah, it, it cooled off, and apparently there were little snowdrops. Apparently, that's what I'm hearing. So, and of course, that's when I decided to wear my very thin leather jacket. But to be fair, I wasn't sure what the transportation would be. So luckily, because there were so many people on the people mover, there was body heat. So it it worked. It definitely worked. Actually, the odor wasn't bad yet. Yet. Yeah, yeah, just wait till like tomorrow and then it's gonna be really <laughs> bad. Shower people, showers are amazing. And especially in this weather, they're nice and warm and comfy. It's just when you get out of the shower, it's the worst part. Because it's all of a sudden really cold. It's like, oh God, ruined. Um, yeah, so weather in, in California. And by the way, I wanna point out that Dave, you were originally from Denver. Yes. Do you ever refer to California as Cali? No, no. Yeah, uh, people from LA or just California never refer it to, to Cali. We just say LA or whatever. And you, know, you know where that came from? That no. Came from Cali? It came from LL Cool J's song back in the 80s, um, Going Back to Cali. That mother Going Cali. back to Cali. <laughs> to Cali. To Cali. To Cali. Going back to Cali. And it's like, who says no, that? I think so. <laughs> people who aren't from California. Yeah, people that aren't from California say it, but, yes. but we don't. And whenever people do, it's like, oh, there's that word. <laughs> I totally forgot about that word. So <laughs> this guy's like, oh, God, I just walked in on a panel. 
But to answer your question, hot. Yes. And, Very hot. And it'll probably be hot until December. Yeah. So, because we don't get seasons. We don't get seasons. We don't. Yes. Yeah. I've button mashed. Very, and, and I was good at it too. No, actually, I got to play a Blaze Blue tournament um, in Spokane. Did I, you really? Was, uh, oh, convention good. up there called Akuro Nekocon. And uh, one of the great things was is they had had uh, they had the this, they had asked me to come in and do a Blaze Blue tournament where I got to play. Everybody liked it. I was like the king of the hill, so they had to come up and, and play me. And uh, of course, I played with Jin the whole time and and uh, got my bu my butt handed me to me the whole time too. But I was like. Yeah! I'm winning! Yeah. But I actually I figured out one move. Ice car? Ice car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ice car. Ice car. And that's all I could do. <laughs> hey, but I won a few rounds. <laughs> the first of all, Gene and Ron are made to be easy. It's oh, is that right? Yeah. You guys, like, the main characters are designed to be easy for pros and beginners. It's characters like Lychee that are for the top advantage. And that's exactly why I suck when I play as her. Because <laughs> she's way too she's way too technical for me. Yeah. So that's why I just play as Taker because he stomps on people. Yeah. And and I mean I, I don't I have not the last Blaze Blue game that I played was Continuum Shift. So I haven't had a chance to play the others, but um, but I I I've never done a tournament because I'm terrified too. Because <laughs> because gamers take it very seriously. They, they take do. the tournament very seriously. And I'm the last person that wants to go in and act as if I'm making a mockery of it, you know? Like, cause that's not what I'm doing. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna beat you. I'm, I'm a button masher, I have to tell you, so. I was, when I was doing the tournament in Spokane, yeah. um, they were live, like, whatever it was like being broadcast live on the internet live stream yeah they were live streaming it and so we were there were all these comments coming down from all these people wherever they were like while they were watching this tournament and they're like yeah he might be the voice but he sucks <laughs> <laughs> it's true <laughs> we don't, we just we don't, you know we don't get to play the video games very often one thing i will say on the gameplay before we take another question is um calamity trigger um i wasn't too fond of how they did the the game format because you know how well it depends on how much time you have but with Calamity Trigger, did you play Calamity Trigger? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, pretty much you, not only would you, you know when you have conversations with the other characters and you have to, you have to either choose a certain response or whatever, you know? Yes. Well, in Calamity Trigger, they, they made it so you, in order to continue the game, you have to ch you have to choose the right response yes. or the right question, and then on top of that, you have to win the battle with a certain combo and a certain move. Yes. And I'm like, no, <laughs> that's that's way too hard for me. And then they came back with Continuum Shift, and it wasn't it what they totally they totally changed it. Okay. So because I, I think that a lot of fans were saying that's really stupid. So that's hard. That's really hard. Yes, ma'am. Oh. I was just, just, was just gonna point out, not only in uh, Calamity Trigger, not only did you have that, but to get 100%, you had to lose every single battle at least once as well. Yeah. See, that's, that's, that's too complicated for me. My brain doesn't expand that much when it comes to video games. I, 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 I spend my time worrying about other stuff, yeah. <laughs> so, Work. yes ma'am. Um, how do you like voicing two people that when they talk to each other, you just talk to yourself? Oh, I think it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Brother! Oh, yeah! 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 So, so, that's Patrick Seitz, everybody. The voice of Ron and the Blood Edge. Did you have to take the people mover too? And that's exactly what it's called, by the way. <laughs> See, when I think of the people mover, I think of that thing at Disneyland where you're on a little <laughs> track. <laughs> like, they're projecting like a picture from the 70s on a sheet, and then the train drives through the sheet. Yeah. And you're like, wow, we stood how long in line? 
Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I was waiting outside in the. Does anybody know how cold it is? Right, it's probably in the 30s. It's got to be in the 30s, yeah. something like that. I don't yeah. know Fahrenheit, but it's I know it's three. De it's four degrees Celsius. 39. Actually. What is it? Okay. 39. There you go. The 39, yeah. That feels right. like 39. So, the pa the I was going to say the Patricks that we've gotten, but that was supposed to be questions. The questions that we've gotten so far are, uh, well, Dave got, how does it feel to play two different characters? Oh, it plays, it's very cool. Um, what we do, though, is we actually, we record the characters separately. Oh, but it's fun. Uh, it's, Look at it, feel like, for your really, like, arguing. Yeah, when I have, I've actually played Jin against Hakuman, so yes, I, it is a lot of fun to hear myself arguing back and forth, going, I'll kill you! No, I'll kill you! Um, and then the other questions that we've gotten are, uh, what's the weather like in California? <laughs> Told you! That's exactly what we said. And then the other question was, oh, do you play Blaze Blue or have you played Blaze Blue? Yes, but not terribly well because I just don't like Ron and I'm not good at fighting games. Yeah. But Masher? Yeah. Yeah. Dead or Alive? Oh, yeah, no, Dead or Alive, I can't even. Because Dead or Alive would punish you for button mashing. Dead or Alive would be like, I see what you're doing there and I respect your button mashing, but no. Yeah. <laughs> so in a game eventually you'll get lucky and you'll button mash me. Dead or Alive is like, <laughs> <laughs> Which seems really like a strict thing to do for a game that's like selling the point as jingle physics. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can just be like, yeah, you want to beat the game, mash the buttons, jiggle, jiggle, whatever. No. And believe it or not, for and I think you know this, Patrick, for five, they took down the jiggle effect. Well, so they say. I mean, Did Bash, it really? Yeah. Bash doesn't have any jiggle, which I think is terribly sexist. Very sexist. <laughs> Everybody should have jiggle. Okay, great. So <laughs> yeah, so, well, of course. She has plenty. She, she got plenty of jiggle. Like she's got plenty. Yeah, booby lady. Um, yeah. What else? What else? We, there was another question that we got to, but you have a question, sir. Um, I was wondering how you guys felt about the gag reels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Roger is my favorite. No, you guys have the best ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All I know is when I got to do one of the scripts for one of the games, the gag reels is where I said to myself, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go as far as I can go, and I'd stop and I'd look back and I'd be like, oh, there's the translation, okay. I'll see you there in the distance. I, so far. You remember remind me of what the gag reels were. I mean, there's, I, oh, there's the, best, the best one is where um, Rachel puts the spectacles of arrows on Ragna, and all the girls come and fight and fall in love with them, and then about two minutes of the end, all you hear is, excuse me, what did you just say? And up comes Jean. And he's like, what, Jean? And he's like, you harpies, harpies, get away from my brother! And he starts to join <laughs> he's, he's a little obsessed with his oh, brother. Yeah. It's all like, oh, it's all wrong now. Of course! <laughs> it has to be all wrong now. Brother. Brother. <laughs> I just remember Teach Me Miss Lachie. That's, I don't, I, very, I don't, when, okay. How, I don't even remember how long it's been since we recorded uh, Chrono. Yeah. A year seems like it. It's yeah. It just because we work on so many other projects, sometimes just the memory just goes. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, did I do? No, that wasn't in this. That was in that. The only reason why I remember. Um, Teach me Miss Lychee is is because I thought the 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 um, the bang one was really funny where he fantasizes about her so thought that was really funny. Um, uh, again, he's uh, he's doing another panel power. Uh, I was gonna say Power Morphicon, Power Ranger panel. So that takes precedence. Um, but yes. So uh, question, another question. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what that's like at all. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was uh, working on well, Halo, uh, Halo 4, um, but that was, it was to be expected. I mean, those were what we call throw rippers. And so, and then I did, um, uh, I, I actually lost out on a pretty big job uh, for uh, Keeler Elf because I had like stupidly gone in and recorded Spec Ops The Line the day before. 
Yeah, and uh, oh my gosh, and this is nothing but grenade for four hours straight. So I was like, oh, oh, afterward. And they're like, okay, now you need to be an elf. I'm like, ah. <laughs> didn't happen. Yes, absolutely. I just picture you like, fudgy shortbread, like in my head. Yeah, exactly. That's racist, Patrick. Not all elves. They're delicious. <laughs> Magically delicious. Um, oh wait, he's not an elf, he's a leprechaun. <laughs> Getting them mixed up, I know, man. It's that's racist. That's racist. <laughs> Against mythical creatures. The same <laughs> Apparently. I don't see any difference. Um, yeah, Patrick, have you lost your voice in a session? <laughs> that's yes, Garage Hellspring. I know that um, I was complete, my vocal cords were completely thrashed by the end of Dragon Guard 3. I just, I've never screamed so much in a fighting game, and that's saying a lot, you guys, because that's pretty much all I do um, when it comes to games, except for like RPG games, but those include fighting as well. So, and either way, there's a lot of screaming in a lot of the games that we do. But, um, yeah, I have definitely lost my voice at the end of a session, and I felt good about it because I know that, you know, it was a kick, you know what, session, um, but at the end of the day, I just, they kick, kick ball too. Kick ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I saw a hand back there somewhere. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Get into character to just say things, just random things. Just random things. Just random things. <laughs> Go to a jacket in a box and just talk like Gene and not oh. maniacal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't done it. I haven't done it as Gene Kisaragi per se. But um, I was. Uh, we were on vacation. We were in uh, northern Idaho, and in northern Idaho, it snows there in the winter time. It gets very, very cold, and um, so. And this, you're asking if I've ever messed with anybody using my voice, character voice, or whatever. So there happens to be this uh, convenience store that's a drive-thru. It's a drive-thru convenience store. What? Okay? And so I, we're driving up and I see this and I'm like, I have to go through there. I have to go through there. Well, but I didn't need anything. And so I'm looking at my wife and I'm going, do we need... Do we need anything? And she's like, no, but I have to go through it. The one, so, the one time you don't need something. Exactly. <laughs> so, without, I don't know, my control, I'm like, the car's going in, I don't know what to do. And so, the, the gal comes up to me, and she comes up to the window, and she goes, hello, sir, what may I get for you? And I'm panicked, and I just go, pardon me, would you have any gray coupon? <laughs> Man, true story. And she goes, what? Yeah. And I go, great coupon. She goes, no. And I go, okay, thank you. <laughs> and I just drove off. And it was the only thing I could think of that I've used my voice just because I had nothing else to do. So. <laughs> that is hilarious. I, I, I'm just impressed that you had the presence of mind. Yeah, I would have been like, Slim Jims, have them? You know, maybe? That's crazy. How big was the store? <laughs> Dave, how big was the store? Uh, it was, um... How big was the store? Yeah, because if they need to get something yeah, for you... Really wide well, it was basically, it looked like a, a, uh, one of those, uh, you know, the bridges over Madison County with those old bridges that you just drove through, the, through a tunnel? Right. And well, it was like that, and then there was the, uh, the ice cooler with the beer and the soda pop. And wow. Then there, it was just like a convenience store, except you just drove through it. <laughs> I just thought that was okay, because I was wondering, because if you actually did have something for her to grab, you know, how long would it be before she would come back with it? That's what I was wondering, how big the store was. Oh, oh no, maybe maybe 10 seconds. Yeah, oh, was, yeah. I gotcha. I didn't have Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> I can't imagine. can't imagine that. Uh, have I messed with anybody? Um, no. Because I'm not clever enough. <laughs> I, I honestly can't... Actually, well, not in my character voices, but I will totally go up to people that are cosplaying as my characters, and I'll just say, like, oh, that's that's a great light here. Oh, that's a great so-and-so. And they'll look at me just, oh, thanks. 
and then they'll go back to doing their stuff, and then I'll turn to whomever I'm with, and I'll be like, they don't even know. <laughs> and it's so much fun, because then it makes it even better when they do find out, yeah. and then they they have an oh, you know, moment. I was, uh, I, I, I was at a, I don't remember where, where it was, but I was at a convention, and I was standing, and there's this, um, uh, placard, and it's showing what, who's going in which uh, panel room, who's doing what. And so I'm standing there, I'm reading it, trying to figure out where I'm supposed to be for my next panel. And there's a, there's two gals, and they're sitting on the floor right next to where the, uh, the, the cardboard cutout thing is or whatever. And um, this girl is sitting right there, and she's like, I cannot wait to meet David Vincent. I'm going to have to sign this, I'm going to have to sign that, 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 that. And I go, I heard it's pretty cool. And she goes, I know. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because she came to my panel after that, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "It was you." I, I haven't messed with these ones, but I have. I used to have this shirt, this T-shirt, I'm going to be Hans. Uh, it just said, uh, "Just say no to dubs on it." People <laughs> 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 would be like, "Dude, love your shirt." I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, what is terrible man? <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. We've been out of retirement. <laughs> Just say no to dubs. Just say no to dubs because they pay. <laughs> Sir in the back. Uh, question. With all the dialogue that's in the Blaze Blue games, how long does it take for you guys to record one entire game? Oh, oh. The first one took a long time. Great. <laughs> that means more paychecks. More paychecks for us. It's terrific. Uh, oh gosh. Patrick, you, you, you've been on the other side of this, like... I was just trying to remember how... Mm. Uh, I think it's Halloween. Uh, I was just trying to figure out like, how long it, it, that one took. I want to say that was like... Uh, yeah, oh I mean, like three I remember on the first one going into that first session and seeing this gigantic three ring binder full of pages <laughs> yeah. and going, you fight, fighting game, right? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fighting game? Oh, yeah, it's a fighting game. And looking at this, like, this can't possibly be a fighting game because the last fighting game I'd done before that first place blue was like Tekken 5, where, yeah. where the sum total of my session was like half an hour. Yeah. yeah. So to be like, oh yeah, there's a fighting game script. That's nuts. Yeah. I can play it, but that's a crazy time. But appreciated. Yeah. Very much appreciated. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it can range from honestly, there's no one answer because it depends. Sometimes a production can start and then sometimes it can stop just for a certain, you know, if the holidays come up or, or if the studio needs to use that studio for something else for a temporary, you know, time. It really depends on what's going on at the studio. Yeah. And it depends on the availability of the actors and the deadline, how much time they have for. Oh gosh, like it really just depends on. I worked on a video that. game on and off for two years uh, called Disaster Day of Crisis. Yeah. You know it. Wow. Okay. So I worked on that one for two years. Two years. Oh man, I made money on that game. It was great. And it never got released in North America. Oh, yeah. Did you get paid? Two you years, got paid. But I got paid. You yeah. got paid. Oh, <laughs> um, yes. Lady in the Pink. Are you going to keep your roomie? No, I'm actually a special Oh, that's cute. Sorry, go ahead. I have a question for Patrick. Patrick. So in Natalia, in Leslie and Teens, you actually say five cats and five George Mark yes. at Arby's, and I want to know the backstory about why you said that. Why I said that? Because I wrote that line. <laughs> no, I, I adapted that script for that episode, and uh, this scene, for those of you who may have not seen it, I'm right, telling you, it's a scene where and Prussia are sneaking into the Americans' army camp, and Prussia's like, bye, and, and Jeremy has to then fool the uh, American soldier and believe it. He too is an American. Uh, and so when we got there, I wrote a couple, I, I'm, I'm big when I'm doing scripts, I'm big on writing alternate lines. Like, okay, here's the line, here's another version of the line, here's another version of the line. Just to give, you know, the director the actor's choices when I move. Uh, so one of the choices I put down 
what is the five cats for Twitch marks? Thinking maybe they'll keep it, maybe they'll cut it. But at least I put it out there and I tried. And so then when I went in to record later and the line was still in the script, I was like, okay, he must not have hated it because it's still here. I'm going to go for it. And that's the one they And then it's the beautiful world, but yeah. Yeah, well, I thought you were talking about a beautiful world. I'm talking about the first one. Oh, the, for, for the, the painted white yeah. outtakes? Oh, yeah. I don't know why. It just, <laughs> the, the reason why is because those were, you know, me recording Italia for 12 hours a day, and after 12 hours of Italia, that's the kind of stuff that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> and just at that particular time, they didn't stop recording. Like, instead of stopping the tape, the engineer just, he knew something momentous was going to happen. He let it roll. I can't, I, just kept I, I, I can't, I, I have a very hard time getting through Hotelia just because it's all over the place. I'm so confused by it. It's, it's so, I mean, I think it's adorable. Don't get me wrong. I think it's adorable, but my attention span can't keep up with it. They're five minutes long, Laura. They're five minutes long. I'm just saying. For me, I think it's adorable and... Hearing Patrick as Germany makes me giggle because it's awesome. I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think my favorite, honestly, it sounds stupid, but I think one of my favorite lines of yours is the first one. Everybody, shut up! I'm like, okay, Patrick, <laughs> I'll shut up. You know what makes me giggle? What? Vic is Greece <laughs> and his special friendship with Japan. <laughs> I just picture him saying these things like, the Spartans would, would check each other, naked. And then just, you know, parents being like, no thank you, I took one. I haven't even, I, I see, I haven't even gotten that far, but... It's, 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 it's Oh, is it? It's very cool. Because Greece wants to jump Japan's boat. Yeah, I tell you, you, you got a loyal fan base there. I tell you fans are... We had, we had at, at Oticon, the year that the dub premiered, uh, we had whistles. Because we didn't know how crazy y'all were going to be. Like, they were like, bad touch whistles. So if anything went wrong, we could blow the whistle, and in theory, aid would come swooping in. Like, like a flare gun in the zombie movies. But without the, the flare. Uh, and I think we were right, they took the bomb out of Todd's whistle. Oh. <laughs> oh. I just put your head <laughs> Oh, did you ever get in trouble for writing any of the Italian lines? Because there were some really offensive stuff. <laughs> some, Hilarious, but very. There were some offensive. I, uh, I mean, in trouble? The like, best one was the very beginning where I think Italy gives you a present and you go, What is this? Another jewel? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That I didn't write. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the only thing that I did that even skirted into territory of like, What? Was I. Uh, uh, it was. Do the episode where he goes in and he's getting the book from the book salesman? Yes. Yeah. Oh, and the guy's got the yellow so in like, hey, two grabs! Uh, it's Germany. Uh, so I, know, I mean, that, that's a show where you just write what comes to you. And, you know, and like I usually do, you give a couple different versions. And if they want to go for the really wrong version, they go for that. But you, you give them something a little less horrible. So if they want to. Tell people one thing that um, when they premiere that and. After they heard that, when it was over, they got into some serious trouble, like, you can't say this. <laughs> yeah, Joe people were saying something like that, that, yeah. you know, they were really mad that that line was in there. I mean, well, I, people are easily offended, probably shouldn't be watching and talking. Probably. Yeah. And oh, people I, I, get offended oh, way too that easily is. nowadays. That had me laughing my ass off. You, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Sorry. I have a question for Patrick. Patrick. Um, probably, uh, Germany, just because he has more to do. I mean, is she, over the course of Bleach, like, he's like, hey, I'm your dad. I've got an interesting backstory, and okay, bye. I'm going to be at home crying at the poster while you do crazy, crazy things for hundreds of episodes of a stretch. Like, he doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> really didn't give him much to do. I there was a stretch where the only time he would ever talk was in, like, the ba da ba ba da ba 
like next episode previews. Yeah. Like he wasn't even in the actual episode. He's like, hey, next time on Bleach, crazy crap. So, <laughs> I think that it should be Talia. It's Talia. I think that's kind of cute. You also did Kimpachi 2.0. I did. It was Kimpachi 2.0. That, I remember that culminated with the point where they were fighting the clones of themselves. I'm like, okay, so there's good Kenpachi and bad Kenpachi, and they're fighting at the same time. And so, okay, let's voice Kenpachi on this side. But oh crap, when they like flash their swords, then at the cut they switch. So you're trying to be like, which one's got the glowy eyes? You just gotta go back and forth and back and forth. You want to get all of one Kenpachi, and then go back and get all of the other Kenpachi. Because if you just like try and catch them both, it's gonna be a mess. Nah. There's Kenpachi's everywhere. I'm like, so much Kenpachi. <laughs> And then I was Sentaro, who looked exactly like a Sheen, and acted exactly like a Sheen. I'm like, this is only going to end in heartache. Like, at some point they're all going to talk to each other, and I'm going to be bummed. <laughs> and I think somewhere at the end of the dub, they all were, like, talking to each other. Like, I knew this thing would come. I called it! I got this. I knew it. Okay, we have about five minutes left. Who has a question who has not asked a question? You, sir. Glasses. Alright. Uh, have any of you guys been involved with the project? or a show in which you look at the material and then you have this moment where you look back outside the sound booth and say, you know this crap is ridiculous, right? No, because we like getting paid. <laughs> 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 you go on some stuff and sometimes the director will be like, yes, this is over. And if they put that out there, then yeah. you can. But you don't want to be like, man, this is some crap. And then find out it's the director's like passion project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Especially if the client is there, yeah. that's that's a big no-no. Uh, Who the heck wrote this crap? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're fired. That's a it mistake does. you only made once. <laughs> yeah, and, and he, so, I mean, if, uh, like Patrick said, if the, pa if, I was going to say the Patrick, if the Patrick <laughs> says it, if, if the director says, all right, this show's a bit ridiculous, just letting you know, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, and if the client jokes about it, too, if the client's like, we don't get it, but this is what's happening, blah, 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 then, you know, yeah, you can make a joke about it, but but don't keep it on going. It's, right. it's, you know, it's better to just honestly not say anything, like, until they start joking about it, and then, or even then, just keep it to a minimum, because you're there to work. You're not there to, you know, totally bash on the whole thing, so. And you're getting paid, so at the end of the day, you really exactly. aren't in a position to be like, what is this tribe that you waste my time with? It's a man, so. <laughs> that that brought me. Yeah. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, question. David, how did you like playing King Richard in the Tales of Graces series? Oh, Richard in Tales of Graces? Uh, he was awesome. Uh, the great thing about playing him is there was a lot of lines. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, the great thing about playing Richard was, is, is as a character, there were so many different dichotomies to him. You had Lambda, yeah. right? Uh, you have, uh, you know, a very noble Richard. Um, and then one of my favorite parts of the, uh, the Tales of Graces series is the, the humor. And the uh, the skits, the funny skits, the very end of it. Captain, you <laughs> guys know what I'm talking about. The mask of Verona. Yeah, the, the mask of Verona. <laughs> I was so I was wrong. Apparently, you have to understand, guys. I'm so used to panels being an hour. We're, we're going to 8:30. Oh, I totally forgot. Well, yeah, I totally forgot. Yeah, totally right. yeah, I'm sorry about that, you guys. I'm so used to panels being only an hour or so. But uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Lots more questions yes. right there. He's fun, but man, is he ripping up. Um, He's always ripping. Yeah, he really. I mean, with 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 Gamagori, uh, I had seen a little bit going into. I'd seen enough of it going into the recording process to tell the studio, like, let's just do two-hour sessions for him. Because usually you do like two hours, three hours, four hours, you really don't go for four hours. But for him, let's just do two and not do back-to-back -back days ever, because that, he just yells all the time. Which is hilarious because then, you know, at the moment I was looking online, because I apparently hate myself, just to see what people were saying about them, I'm like, he's not even yelling, why isn't he yelling? I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh you guys, you guys. Um, was no, this, I'm sorry, was this from a, like an actual episode or a trailer that they heard it? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, uh, in the actual episode. Oh, okay. I was going to say. But, because... but it got mixed down such that. Oh, okay. I'm watching so... on their laptop with no like gotcha. speakers. Okay. Like, oh, no. I was I was screaming that it was a thing that happened. No, I, I, I like Omgore. 
Do you don't even know? <laughs> that was one where when I got the copy, like I read for a couple, I read for like two other characters, two or three other characters in Gamagori, and I thought to myself, it's gonna be Gamagori or nothing. I, I, I got a hunch. Um, thankfully it panned out. I like it. He's fun. He's not soft. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh huh. It sucked. I hated it. I'm, to I'm teasing with you. I'm messing with you. No, Squiggly was a lot of fun. Um, she's she's adorable and she's a zombie. Um, my favorite part is how um, Liam O'Brien is my companion. I think that's awesome, and I think he rocks it as Leviathan. Um, I didn't get to hear it. I didn't get to hear it until after we were done recording it. Um, like I didn't hear anything with myself and Liam. So when I finally heard it, I heard a couple clips on YouTube um, and uh, I was so happy with how it turned out. My favorite, I think one of my favorite lines between uh, Squiggly and Leviathan is when she, she says something like, um, I, I don't, it's not the dragon line, it's not the, who's a good little dragon monster, it's not that one, but it's, Oh, actually, it is that one. She she says to him, um, "Who's a cute little dragon monster?" Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And Leviathan just is giggling, and he says, "You flatter me, my lady." I'm like, "Oh, Liam. Okay." <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was yeah. He's hot as Leviathan, so it definitely works. No, Squiggly was a lot of fun, and the team's great. Um, Christina definitely is uh, like she's a pretty good director, so it, it works out great. So. Awesome. It was total awesome sauce. I was about to ask you guys, like, how you guys like, Well, we, we don't um, get to record together in the booth. When we go into, like, for Blaze Blue, for example, um, that's done one at a time. Uh, it's one actor at a time. Uh, probably because of uh, timing issues, for one thing. Right, Patrick. And the fact that it's expensive and all of that, right? It just it doesn't make sense to pay two people to each be there four hours if they're only each working two hours, and you can just hire them for the two hours each that they're working. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is sometimes on the prelay animation where, you know, they've got infinite budgets to work with, they'll bring in an ensemble and record that way, but that's also because at that point the budgets they're working with are a, a magnitude greater than, than what we're doing for, uh, for, for the, the import games, definitely for the anime. So it's a scheduling and a money issue. Yeah. But if it's done right, you can't tell the difference. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's, that's, right, that's exactly. Oh, yeah. But as for when I know the cast members, oh my god, these guys are horrible. <laughs> I hate them so much. Like, with a bloody passion. Trouble yeah. <laughs> um, Dave, how do you feel about your, your fellow castmates? Them. Yeah. No. No. I mean, honestly, it's it's to me it's just fun. You know. I mean, Patrick. I, I get to work with him. He directs all the time, and so uh, he directed. Uh, you know, the what was what was the last Blaze Blue game that, that came out was it was a Chrono Fan Uh Directed that. You know, and getting to go in and, and um, play um, Jim Kisaragi. Um, you know, being directed by Run. You know, to me, it's, it's it's great. It's a lot of fun. Patrick is is. One of my favorite directors to work with. Um, well, Patrick communicates differently than other directors. Every director has their own style, and I just yell no. Yeah, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Get her. A ruler across the knuckles in this guy. Yeah, no, Patrick. Patrick is. Whenever I get to work with Patrick as director, it's always. It's. Always, I know it's going to be a good day. Well, because for one thing, it helps the fact that you are an actor before yeah. a director. You know, it's be a huge thing. Yeah, because really good point because you're you're very sensitive to what the actors are doing and what they're going through. You know what I mean? Like if it's a screaming session, then. Depending on the person, you can tell how much they can do and how much they can't for the day, you know? I, I mean, there are directors who don't act, but that seems like voodoo to me. Like, I don't know how people that don't do this know how to articulate what they want to the people who do. And, so, and some people can do that. Like, I'm not disparaging directors that don't act, because the ones that are good, I just, I don't know where that comes from. Like, right. For me, I'm like, oh, I know what it's like to be on the other side of the mic. So, yeah. here's what I'll tell the actor. Um, 
and directing is a weird thing too. It's it's because you've got actors coming in, but actors, myself included, I'm not talking crap, are kind of like little like little little show dogs, little get me show dogs. <laughs> like they're high maintenance, and you don't want them to breed together too much. <laughs> you don't want them to breed together too much. I love it. Because then there'll be drama and birth defects. That's true. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? Like, everyone's different. You'll have someone come in where um, they're not going to want to joke around at all, and maybe if they get to the end of the session and they're like, you guys are doing really well time wise, then yeah. they'll start to ease up and make jokes, but mainly they want to be there, do a good job, and get it done. Then you'll have people where if you don't joke around with them a little bit, they lose the energy. You've got people where mm -hmm. if you tell them how to read a line, like specifically what words to hit, um, they'll be like, okay, thanks, I never would have guessed that. Or, or you've got people on the other end who are like, how dare you! Line read? I don't need a line read. I am an actor! Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and sometimes you're working with someone you've never worked with before, and you just don't know yet. You kind of have to, like, have to sort of suss them out. Um, but no, no two, no two sessions are going to be alike because your relationship with each actor is going to be different, mm -hmm. if for no other reason than that they're all different people. It's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's definitely appreciated though, because you know, like I said, you can tell if Dave is screaming for four hours, or if after the two-hour mark, if he's been screaming. If it's for a four-hour session, if he's getting to the two-hour mark. You, you know, you can tell if he's just going downhill, you know, like if his energy is going down or if whomever, you know, it's just from one actor to another, you can, you can just tell when it's like, all right, I think we either need to take a break or, you know what I mean? So, and some directors, again, not, not talking smack, but some directors, because they are not actors, uh, won't know. They, they don't know when it's time to take a break. They don't know when it's okay, that's enough for today. Because as an actor, you are expected to do what you are told, what you're told to do and what the character demands. And so it's, it's very interesting, that aspect, to have a, a director that is also a performer that understands that. You have to do it to understand. Uh, yeah. And, and also, I mean, the people that are coming in are your friends and co-workers, and it's not a big community, so mm -hmm. you need to get what you need to get for that particular gig to make the client happy, but you also can't be Captain Ahab, you know, flogging your crew to catch that elusive white whale. <laughs> because, because they won't want to work with you, and... Does that mean the next time I work with you, Patrick, are going to go look for Moby Dick? Is that, is that what that means? Captain Ahab, right? Is that what that means? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm expecting so, that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm just gonna be waiting there. Okay, Patrick, when are we gonna go on this voyage, man? Voyage. This voyage. And <laughs> Lauren, voyage. this is the voyage. <laughs> go get started. Okay, you've had a question for a while. Lauren, would you like working on Zillia Water Zillia Ooh. The first one was, I, I love, I have a favorite scene in the first one. Uh, I will tell you, she's like, tell me. Okay, we'll just have this intimate moment, you and me. Um, it's the scene where she, spoiler, um, where Alvin shoots her. And I'm, I remember record, yeah, that's my favorite scene, as weird as that sounds, because, because, she had it coming. She ha oh, Leia had it coming. <laughs> no, she didn't. No. Um, I, I loved the recording that scene because I was really happy with how it sounded when it came out. And not only that, but I, I had a blast doing it. Because the for me personally, I like to do the dramatic scenes. Those are a lot of fun for me. Um, so that was definitely one of my favorite scenes. And the fact that she and Alvin are still not quite together uh, uh, bugs me because I, I, Jude, it's not gonna happen. It's Leia with Jude, it's just not gonna happen. Um, but the second one has so many people that I love in it. You know, Josh Greeley as, uh, what's his name? <laughs> I haven't played it yet. Um, 
the, the lead and then and then Michael you know Michael Tatum and and it was it was fantastic but uh, I'll probably see the first one probably the first one because that was the beginning of it and that's when Leia makes her you know she goes from through a whole character arc that's when she grows as a person as a character I've had um, young ladies come up to me and tell me, you know, I love Leia because she is such an inspiration, because she's such a strong woman. And, you know, when we record, we don't really, I mean, sometimes we do think about that stuff. But a lot of the times we're thinking we, we just want to get the right take. We want to get something that the director is happy with. Sometimes we don't necessarily always think about how it's going to have an impact on people. So when people have told me that, um, I'm I'm tickled pink by it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's awesome if you are inspired by somebody. And and then I thought to myself, well, why would they be? And then I remembered that she starts off as this kind of she's enthusiastic all the way through, but she really just grows as a character. And so definitely, probably, yeah, I would say one. I think I thought of two because it came with a really really cool special edition. Uh, like collector's edition. I mean, come on. I got a pocket watch. That's all I have to say. I love pocket watches. So. Yes. Sure. Yes. Game sure. recordings uh, often are very fast paced. Yes. Uh, go down to the next line. Read it twice. Okay, we'll take the eight take. Moving on to the next line. You've had time to maybe read the line above yours, maybe read the line below it. There's not a visual. You've maybe seen your character, maybe you haven't. It's, it's, I think people are usually laboring under the, the assumption that we're taking a lot more time when we're recording games and then it's a lot more of right. a collaborative. We're going to sit around and we're going to read the script and then we're going to talk about it and then we're going to have a table read and we're going to analyze. No. It's, you get there, it's a cold read, you've never seen it before, the clock is ticking, you're earning money even if you're not talking, so get your ass in the booth. <laughs> it's exactly that way. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's sort of amazing given those parameters that anything that emerges from that process would affect people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that comes down to the client knowing what's up, the director knowing what's up, and yeah. just moving things along, getting the right take, mm -hmm. but also not being like, okay, so this scene, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there are times when you have to set the scene and tell the actor what's up, or you're never going to get the right read, but you don't have to tell them the entire 8,000 year history of right. this fantasy world. You can just be like, you're mad at him because he stole your sandwich. Go. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. It's true, which is why it's so nice for me to hear that because we don't think about that. We're thinking about, I mean, it, I don't mean to sound like it, we, we don't think about that when we're told it, but during the recording process, it's, okay, how am I going to do this next take? Yeah. And then between, how am I going to do this next take? And then what's the next line after that? Or what's the line before that? Because there's still got to be context. So it's especially a treat when people tell me that. Because you ever think to yourself, man, I'm going to go out there and change some lives today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They come out of the booth, made a difference. I exactly. Tell. I wonder what this. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, <laughs> but it's true. It's very, it's very quick. It's, it's. You get into the studio. Oh, hi, how you doing? Boom, boom, boom. You're recording and you're done. The, the thing that we can't specifically talk about. Yeah. Yet, the, the, the that, thing, on, that thing. That um, thing. Someone came in and we did 400 lines in four hours. Yeah. And that's not like a line being a sentence. Sometimes it was a sentence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was a, oh yeah. Sometimes it was two sentences. But I mean, to be fair, at that point in the process, they had had many sessions and they were locked into the characterization and their instincts and their, and their cold reinterpretations were just very good to begin with. Yeah. But that still, that's a just a, a, a prodigious amount mm -hmm. of talking. That's, that's as many oh cues God, as- God, there was so as, much talking in that. <laughs> you, that's as many cues as you would have in a chatty episode of an anime. Mm -hmm. We were doing an entire episode of a show in four hours, yep. which just is not done. It's unheard of. Yeah. The games, games chug right away. Usually the first couple of sessions when games start, as you say, you know, the, the actor's now gotten used to the character and all of that. In the beginning, usually the sessions can be a little slow at first because they're getting used to the character. They're, they're getting in touch with the character and they're getting like, okay, well, this is how they would say it and, you know, naturally reacting. 
Question, sorry. So, Dave, you need something. Right, right, So, I'm from that. I'm saying, Yeah. So, I'm just curious. That's one of the most fundamental things all I have to do is be off book. Yeah. Because I'm wondering, since you're going to be video games, you're going to require me to be off book. Off book? We're always on book. Oh, uh, with yeah. theater. Now, here's the thing: is uh, Patrick, you done a lot of theater? We, if, I know more. Have you done? Well, yes. We've all done. I've done a ton of theater, and you, you have to be off book because you're on stage and you're doing this. Same with it uh, on camera when you're doing uh, movies, TV, whatever else it is. Uh, yeah, you have to be off book because you're you're there acting and you're doing a thing. On uh, with video games or with voice acting specifically, uh, you're always on book. No. There's not a, uh, you're, you're seeing the copy for the first time that day, often because it's Monday morning and the script got finished Sunday night. I mean, sometimes you go in for a morning session and you, you feel that script, you're like, oh, this is still warm from the printer. Yeah. This was just born. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, uh, just with the sheer amount of lines you have to go through, and the fact that there's no real advantage to being off book because you're not acting with other people. I mean, it's, it's, you're not losing anything. It's not like being on stage where you can't do anything as long as you're doing this, and you can't, you can't have that interaction. Since it's piecemeal one at a time anyway, yeah. no reason not to have it in front of you. Yeah. And also, actors, if you told an actor, here's your game script, uh, you know, on your own time, unpaid off the clock, memorize this, they would laugh until they come. Ha! <laughs> that, 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 that would never be. It's, it's, well, here's, it's a different beast. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's, here's the thing. In, in Hollywood, okay, in theater, in anything else, um, one of the things that you have got to become very, 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 very good at as an actor, if you, regardless if you're going to do theater, movies, TV, and be off book, you still have to be an, an excellent cold reader. Okay, and for those of you who don't know what cold reading is, cold reading is when you get the script, you, have a, you take a moment, you see what's going on, and even though you've got that script, you're able to deliver the line and make it believable because you know that line's right there even though you may have to glance and see what's going on. Okay, that's called cold reading. That is, uh, is a huge part of acting of, of any actor's career, be them on camera or off camera. So auditions are always a cold read, whether they're for a movie or whether they're for a, a voiceover. Always a cold read. And so, um, with voiceover, yeah, it just it lends itself to have that script there and to be an excellent cold reader as a voice actor. Also, it's acting in general, but there are two different forms of acting. One is in, on a stage in front of people, whereas if you were looking at somebody reading from a script, yeah, you'd think, well, I've seen it, actually. I've seen actors read from a script because it was a very last minute uh, thing. And they were fantastic. So no, it really doesn't. It really doesn't matter whether you are on book or off book. However, the reason why a lot of stage directors wanted to be off book is simply because it helps. It helps with the illusion that the actors are saying this for the first time. Well, that, and then you've got blocking and everything else that's going on yeah. with you're doing a stage production. You, you have to recreate that moment. That's acting. So that, that you, you have to be off book. You can't be cold reading. Right. It's, it's like it's like TV versus a musical. TV, they're going to get the guy that looks like the character is supposed to look because they're going to be this far away from him. If you're doing a musical or opera, you know your big bad evil villain father figure bass can be 20 years old as long as he's got the pipes for it. Yeah. Because he's going to be on stage, you slap a fake beard on him and some you know some lines for aging, and the audience is way back there. It's not that one is better than the other. It's just they're they're different enough mediums that. The thing that I worked on with Lauren that we referenced earlier had 30,000 lines, and a lot of those lines were multiple sentences. I am not memorizing those. It would never, it would, it would never come out. It would never exist if we, if we had to go off book. And the idea being, if you do your job well enough, it, it doesn't sound like you're reading. I mean, if, it's, if right. it sounds like you're reading, you've already failed mm -hmm. yeah, with, with the stuff we do. So It's true. Acting. Acting. Acting is an art form. <laughs> Hi, Mom. What's your question? You're next, by the way.
Um, I think that, I mean, I, I'm speaking theoretically that. here, but I feel like with a show like Blaze Blue, now granted, I haven't seen all that, so I'm sort of speaking out of my butt here, but I feel like, uh, I mean, it'd be one thing, like, when I said, you know, my, my Tekken five sessions, half an hour, like, to go from that, and then if they made a full show of Tekken, that would be a departure from what I was used to, but I feel like, with Blaze Blue already being that visual novel f novel format as the games, I mean it's a visual novel and you fight every now and then. So I feel like the transition from that to an actual Honest to God series really wouldn't be that that big of a transition. I mean the the the, the you guys know the storylines for Blaze Blue in the game are already pretty chunky and pretty pretty complex and fleshed out. So that seems like that would be a natural sort of segue from one to the other. But again. I know it exists. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know there is an anime, but yeah. I mean, they, they, they never come to us with inside info. It's, it's, yeah. Some days somebody calls me a job or you don't. Yeah. You know, sometimes with with projects, um, like with what, like with anime projects. Oh gosh, like even if it's been out for like a year or two, like again, like I said, we never know. Like, yeah, we're the last to know. You guys are the first to know when something's coming from Japan. But like, uh, it's yeah. No, I can't think of an example. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. What? Oh, just, that's like when, when you record the thing. Yeah. And then it doesn't come out for another two years. Exactly. We, years. Yeah. I, there's no, even if something's been out for a year, there's no time frame on, okay, now we have to get it to the US, like, right, you know what I mean? Like, it just, yeah. Tales of Fantasia. We did the OVA for, for Tales of Fantasia. Yeah. That had been out like eight or nine years on that. And it was a show that out of nowhere. They're like, we're going to take this four episode OVA for this thing. Everyone in the world who's already wanted to see it has seen it because it's been that long and we're going to be done. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, feel, I feel like with stuff like Space Dandy, they're starting to experiment more. That, that, that announcement in Funimation just had a couple days ago about, I think it's the second season of Psycho Pass and Laughter and Blah Blah. You know what I'm talking about. Where they're doing that simultaneous release. Right. But, but traditionally, maybe we're dubbing a new thing, maybe we're dubbing an old thing, maybe we'll read that in Sailor Moon. <laughs> there's no, there's no statute of limitations. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. There was just. Yeah, uh, you yeah. had a question, sir. My first impression of Jin, <clears throat> I, 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 my very, very first impression of Jin, um, it wasn't really, I didn't have too much of a first, like a strong reaction to him until he started getting crazy over Ragnar. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, a uh, uh, wonderful gal, uh, her name is Christy Reed, um, directed the very first uh, Blaze Blue that I was a part of. and. Uh, I remember distinctly going through this character and uh, we're doing this and her just sitting and telling me, she's like, okay, now Dave, your character has a very unique relationship <laughs> with his brother, <laughs> okay? And, and it just kind of evolved from that and then, you know, with, uh, with the brother, you know, it, it, to me it was, uh, I, once I started to learn a little bit more and get a little more in depth with Jin, uh, I fell in love with him. Uh, I just think it was such a fun character to get to play. I love just the, the weird, weird obsession that he has with Ragna. I love how crazy he gets to get, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it took, for me it was, I, I, once I finally like really got into the, the, the nuts and bolts of who this guy was, I fell in love. With, uh, with Ragna, I mean, that's not a, a character type that I usually play. He's, you just looked at him and you're like, grumpy. He's, I mean, he's, he's not real though. I mean, he's, kind of, he's a bit younger, he's kind of snarky all the time, that wasn't what I always would get called in to do. So I was like, okay, this is, this is a departure. Um, and he's very... Bless you. He's very reactive, you know what I mean? He's, he's sort of the straight man of the show. Things, zany things are happening, zany people are around him, and he's just sort of rolling his eyes and being like, ugh, whatever, I'm gonna deal with it. Um, and then, you know, as, as you progress 
through the franchise, you realize that, you know, he'd be the last guy on earth to admit it, but he does have a heart underneath all that. And he does want to do the right thing. He's just got a lot of rough edges to him. Um, so he's, he's, I, I've really, I've really enjoyed playing him just because it's not, it, there's, there's more going on with him than I would have assumed at uh, first blush, so to speak. Uh, That's right, brother. <laughs> Lychee was, uh, I, Lychee will, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, who's your favorite character to play? And I'll, I, I can't pick, like, one favorite, but I know that Lychee, I always say that she will be very near and dear to my heart because we've been, gosh, we've been these characters for, like, four or five years, something like that. Maybe? Six years? Probably about six. Yeah, about six years, and... Lychee was, um, I had done little itty bitty video games before Blaze Blue, so Lychee was my first big video game character, and, um... She's big old. She's big. <laughs> she, she, she a big old gal. Um, but, I... <laughs> you doing okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, what was interesting to me is that I felt very, uh, I was very, uh, not inspired, but I loved the character of Lychee, and I felt um, very fortunate to, for my first big, big video game character, for it to be Lychee, because she just, she's, you know, she's an incredibly, she's, she's sexy, she's maternal, she's kind-hearted, she, she, she's a big doctor. Boobs. Big boobs. All the way. All the way. Can't, you can't go wrong with that. And, you know, it's just, there's nothing... There's nothing to dislike about her, really, and I just, she's also also she's also a very strong woman, so I, I felt very fortunate enough that that was my first big video game character, and it's really just, I loved her character to begin with. I mean, you know, I enjoy playing sexy characters. It, it's, it's awesome. I love it. I mean, I've always loved it. So, it's, she's very near and dear to my heart, and always will be, and maybe one day I'll dress up as her for Halloween. Maybe. I to, thought about today's Halloween. I know, but I don't I don't have anything. Like I don't have a I'm, I'm thinking dress. of your costume tonight. It looks <laughs> cool. I, I, I was just looking at you when you were talking and I he drew Baby. little blood veins on Yeah, you. you guys can't see but I have blood Yeah. Look at our cheek right there. Yeah. I was I know. it was totally creepy. I was looking at it and I was like, oh, God, like <laughs> But it's awesome. It looks really cool. It's, I was so happy with it. And I was gonna go I was gonna go um with a zombie, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna do a zombie because I have a. A zombie in the back. No, something better. Better than a zombie in your purse. A purse or a wallet? What don't you have in your purse? From <laughs> 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 opening ceremonies. Give her a hand, folks. Yeah. Let me give you a hand. Oh my god! When you started throwing the hands out, I'm like, you are gonna hit it. You. Missed. Oh my god, the opening ceremonies. It was hilarious. Ever. Oh my god. Tom Whalen's video. Yeah. He did you. What? He yeah. did you. Yeah. He dressed up as you. <laughs> you were like a t shirt. For, okay, so, so I will. Like uh, so, a couple of different yeah. voice actors or whatever. I can't remember how he set it up. He was like, well, you know, consider them to be in, uh, in good company here. However, he put it, but then... Well, he couldn't be here tonight because he's trick-or-treating with his kids. Yeah. So he said, but being in the spirit, you know, I figured, I looked at the guest list and thought, maybe there's a theme that I can that I can go along with to dress up for Halloween. His first suggestion, his first idea was you. <laughs> so the theme was Goodwill, right? I mean, <laughs> and, then, and then he went from you to Tia yeah. to... Uh, yeah, I don't remember who else, but, I can't but, he, who else, but yeah. he put on a, a, a cardboard a goatee. I'm going to talk with a really deep voice. Yeah. 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 It's it, pretty was, awesome. it was amazing, and we were all thinking, oh, Patrick, you should. You, 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 have, they can show you have to get a copy of the video. It's really, really funny. I think we've got time for one more question. Uh, yeah. Out of all the characters y'all voice acting, who do you think you relate to the most? Uh, what he said was, out of all the characters that we voice acted, who do we relate to the most? Groomer and Monster and Frankie and Wendy's. Um. <laughs> no, I... Uh, yeah. 
because I have an obsession with my brother. Um, probably uh, Seiji Yagadi uh, from Durawa Rob because uh, I can I can really relate to a 15 year old in, in love with a disembodied head. Okay. Now, what were you saying? You're gonna steal that head? <laughs> probably. Probably uh, a mixture of both uh, Lychee and Leia from Tales because I, it depends on my mood, but Lychee is very maternal, she's very kind, and she can be very calm at times, and then Leia is like overly enthusiastic, and I can be ridiculously overly enthusiastic, and I guess it's something that people appreciate. <laughs> so, so, so Lauren Landa likes Lychee and Leia? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. A lot of L's going on there. A lot of L's. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm on LA time. I was up since 4 a.m. last night. Shut up. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, Patrick, do, do you have a, what else do you have tonight? Or is that it? Pit your stuff. Uh, uh, I, might, I might do a quick fly with one piece, but I might not because I haven't eaten at all today. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's the perils of traveling in front. Don't eat here. That's very expensive. <laughs> so I think I'm probably going to go and make it so I don't die. Um, but I've got stuff tomorrow. I will all have eaten and slept by then, so uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I've got autographs uh, at 9 o'clock with some other cool people. Tonight. tonight. 9 o'clock tonight, uh, right over there. And then... Um, Tomorrow, I have got, uh, anybody here want to give a shot of voice acting? Come to my panel tomorrow, please! We'll try my best. Okay, it's at 12 noon, and I'm doing David Vincent's voice acting tryouts, and I will get a bunch of you on stage, and um, have a lot of fun with you. <clears throat> I've also got uh, prizes that I give out for the winners, so come. Um, well, tonight I also am signing with Mr. David uh, from 9 to 10.30, right over there. Tomorrow is the Attack on Titan panel. I'm so excited. So, and that is from eight. Yes, eight o'clock to nine thirty tomorrow night. But I also don't want you guys to forget who's over eighteen. Do you guys like horror movies? Yes. Well, I am having a panel tonight from eleven o'clock to twelve thirty, and we are just gonna watch a bunch of horror movie scenes. And it's going to be amazing. Are you going to come? It is at uh, Panel Room A. Panel Room A. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to go, show up early because I think it's a, I think it's a ticketed event for, like, uh, for the first 100 people or something like that. So we'll see how it goes. But it's going to be fun. Come, and especially since it's Halloween. You know, you got to add some little horror fun into it. Patrick will not be there. Right? No. He don't like horror movies, right? <laughs> Sometimes. I guess it depends on the story. Hi, Vic! Hi. <laughs> anyway.